So this is just a recording of the information from the second masterclass for this term about substantiating your research. Um, so if we just work through, uh, the first thing I guess to know is that substantiating is just a fancy word for using your evidence. Um, realistically, you're looking for at least two sources per point that you're making. And you want to use these to increase the reliability and validity of your argument, which means that you're trying to show that your findings are being replicated by multiple people or organizations or scenarios and that they are valid. For you to do well, your answer must show that it is both reliable and valid. For you to then get this reliable valid information, you need to be using credible resources. We will be looking at your references and you are expected to be supporting your primary sources with broader secondary sources or um, vice versa. Really think about the way that you develop your argument. So if you have a personal testimony, that's a great case study. But how do you know that that's what other people feel or think or experience? You might support that with survey data, which might have a broader appeal. Um, experts could then verify that information. So it's not just the collation of random pieces of information. You are going to be marked on how well you bring it together and make it work to produce a coherent argument. One of the ways you might substantiate is to introduce your source material where relevant. So for example, um, you can see I've written as Mr. X, a professor of sociology explained. Um, you might talk about different student perspectives. You might introduce your survey results. You might uh, write the name of the article that you're referencing. You don't have to give us a whole sentence about the source. But where possible, just trying to drop a little introduction of particularly useful sources that really stand out and make your argument work can be powerful. Of course, if you're doing that for, you know, Wikipedia said, then it's probably not the best argument. When you are substantiating, you're also trying to show that your evidence is banking up against an argument. So you can see my example here, I've got my first piece of evidence coming that I explained that, whatever it is, and then I'm referencing how it was supported by the handout and further to this we had examples from the SACE board and then finally samples from the outcome showcase. So we've got four pieces of evidence there being introduced, being used in a linking way so that we build argument and we're not just listing random facts. We know that when we look at our outcome criteria sheet that we're being assessed on the need for us to actually have um, thorough and insightful use of evidence. So that means that you don't just uh, pick anything willy-nilly, you have to actually think about your sources and what's going to be better. So this means that it's more than just chucking a bunch of quotes in. It might be how you use your stats and your data. You might have diagrams that explain how something functions. You might have your wordles that are actually showing survey results of what was bigger or smaller. You might have your photographs. You might have drawings. Um, there could be videos. So many different ways. If it's evidence, if it's showing us what we've got, um, to prove your point, then it's substantiation. On top of that, though, you have to do your references properly. So you have to pick a style of referencing and stick to it. There's no right or wrong. You can do any type you want, but it has to be the same. If you're using a reference generator, make sure it's always clicked on the same system because you will get that looked at um, and th those really high grades will be brought down if you are inconsistent. So the key takeaways from this session were you need evidence for all your points, um, supporting evidence is needed for all of that evidence, and you must have a reference system and bibliography that's consistent in style. If you've got any questions, please get in touch, um, and hopefully this brief summary gives an idea of what the second masterclass was about.